All right, time for Chamber Talk on a Monday morning, as we do every Monday. Reserve time for the Fairfield Area Chamber of Commerce. And Deidre Detman joined us. Good morning, Deidre. How are you? Oh, good morning. I'm very well. Have a nice weekend. Yes. Got some stuff done in the yard. Picked up some sticks that had blown down over the winter. <laughs> I am uh, be perpetually known as a procrastinator, so I have yet to get out and start even working on the yard. Oh, my goodness. But I did walk around the house <laughs> and noticed the, uh, I don't know if they're crocus or daffodils mm-hmm, or tulips mm-hmm. or... I, I just worry about those little buggers. Yeah, they're all poking up, aren't they, and boy? The trees are budding on the square. And, ah, so I worry about them. I worry about them. But <laughs> warm weather is still here, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. Geese how are flying. The blackbirds are singing. It's beautiful. I saw <laughs> swans a week or so ago. Wow. I saw some, actually, the first time I'd ever seen swans uh, in the wild uh, migrating. So that's Neat. crazy. Neat. All right. A week ago today, yes. you were uh, moderating a uh, retail manager's workshop. Um, let's talk a little bit about what it was, uh, why you had it, and maybe some of the things that came out of that. Absolutely. Yes. Retail manager's working group. So this is a group that comes together and they kind of define where they want to go and what they want to do. And it's basically you know, bringing folks together that have a common interest area. So in this case, it's retail managers. And we had our first meeting, like you said, last week during this, this session. So Lindsay was filling in for me and had about a dozen folks that came together. And we had some really good conversation about both where people would like to build some expertise and have some resources or training brought, but then also you know, this common challenge that we have with folks, um, our local businesses competing with online shopping, and particularly for things that can be procured here in town. And so we're talking about some strategies and some ways to move forward just with that message, because it really, you have to be kind of conscientious about thinking about, about it. And that thought of when you invest in the, our local businesses, they reinvest back into the community, whether that's groups, um, service groups, kids, and so forth. And if you're buying from some online retailer, they're not giving back to support the, the scouts or the band or the sports teams, et cetera. So we're going to focus on that. How, our next, uh, oh. I was just going yeah. to ask, how, how does this differ from in the past? And I know it hasn't been active for a number of years, but mm-hmm. there used to be maybe like a downtown merchants association. Yes. Um, one difference is that any retailer in town is welcome. So it doesn't have to be just downtown. And if we end up, that doesn't mean we may not have an initiative that comes out that focuses on the downtown, but the whole conversation is welcome and open to everyone. We are also welcoming restaurant owners, not just retail businesses. Um, didn't have any that attended this first meeting, but I want them to know they're welcome or we can pull together a separate conversation if that's desired. And it probably should be highlighted that the dynamics of downtown uh, Fairfield have changed over the decades where 25, 30 years ago, uh, all the storefronts were filled with uh, uh, shops Mm -hmm. of one form or another. That's not the case today. So there are different needs and struggles. That's true. That's true. And I know the Convention Visitors Bureau um, has done some studies and and looking at that and, you know, kind of the the best way to try to design your downtown or as you have have space openings, what kind of businesses you would ideally like to put there if possible. It's interesting because I've had uh, visitors come to town and they're um, always amazed of how uh, vibrant our downtown is because they may have come from a community where there are a lot of shuttered buildings. Mm, We mm -hmm. don't have that struggle, but on the other side, there's not a lot, you know, the retail side of it is a lot smaller than it was, as I mentioned, uh, 20, 30 years ago. Yep, there's still opportunities, so that's what we're looking at. So what, what happens next? Well, what happens next is we're doing some homework at the chamber based on some of the needs that were expressed, and we do have another meeting planned. So it was great. Folks wanted to come back together in a month. So we'll actually be meeting Monday, March 27th uh, from 8 to 9 a.m., and this time we're going to meet downtown at Health and Wholeness in their new space. And so, again, we welcome folks. Uh, We are going to be bringing in chairs for seating, so it would be nice to know in advance if you're planning to join us just so you don't have to stand or sit on the floor. (laughs) Find out more information by emailing the chamber, chamber at fairfieldiowa.com. Since we've last spoke, the uh, window to nominate uh, businesses and individuals for the upcoming Chamber Banquet Awards event it has uh, closed, but yes. the planning for the actual event is in full swing. It is, and we are starting. We're getting the calls coming in for folks reserving tables or uh, purchasing their tickets. So please give us a call today. Again, those come. Those tables are reserved and seated. 
you know, first come, first serve. So the sooner that you make that reservation, the closer to the front and all the action you will be. 472-2111. Talk to Lindsay. She can get you uh, penciled in for a re- reservation. Again, the date on that, by the way, is April 6th. Thursday, yes. April 6th. And the theme again is Fairfield All-Stars? Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> Let's, Sports theme. Sports theme. Let's uh, look down the calendar just a little bit further. March 21st, a couple weeks. In fact, uh, two weeks from tomorrow, I believe. Yes, our speed networking that we're so excited about and had Josh on here a couple weeks ago, we did not get kind of the critical mass pre-registered. I think part of that was the really nice weather we were having around that time. So we're going to give it another shot and instead offer it um, a little bit later in March, Tuesday the 21st, again, 645 to 815 in the evening at the Best Western Fairfield Inn. And happy that this is sponsored by State Farm Sean McCarty. All right, uh, let's highlight your member-to-member discount uh, feature outlet this week. Yes, it's Fairfield Nutrition here on the square. And they're offering a free body composition analysis plus 20% off a retail product order. Also, wholesale member discounts up to 50% are available. If you're looking for something filling, nutritious, and uh, a little lighter for lunch, maybe slop, uh, stop over and uh, see Sue for uh, a delicious shake. Absolutely. All absolutely. Right. Yep. I've been sampling some of their products. And Before it's we get to our guest today, I real quickly mark the calendar for the next legislative forum. Yes, that's coming up on Saturday the 18th, so a week from this Saturday. All right. And again, that's at the Fairfield Public Library at 7.30 Mm -hmm. in the morning. All right. You do have a guest today. It is uh, Rachel Wunderlich. She is the CYC uh, County Youth Coordinator at the uh, Extension Office here in Jefferson County. So I'll let you uh, take over. Yeah, we had a chance. We did an ambassador visit out at the Extension Office and had a conversation with Rachel and was just She's a delight to visit with, so I'm thrilled that she's with me this morning. So good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Deetra. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do out there? Yeah, sure. Well, I grew up not too far from here. I grew up in Keokuk County, I'm so familiar with the area. Graduated from Pekin and then went to Iowa State to att- obtain my master's, or excuse me, my <laughs> bachelor's degree. Master's is next. Um, so I got my bachelor's degree from Iowa State in December. And uh, working with uh, child, adult, and family services, specifically youth programming. So I was happy not only to find a job in my realm of study, but also um, back here in Southeast Iowa. I grew to love it when I was a child. So I'm I'm happy to be back and working with Extension uh, and primarily the 4-H program out there. Um, So 4-H reaches um, all K-12 through youth, and uh, our goal is to reach every youth in the state of Iowa. Um, so we're, I'm really happy to be out there and providing those programs and opportunities for the youth. That's awesome. So you're like the perfect case study that we love of people going out, getting their education and coming back home to the community. So <laughs> yeah, yay yeah. to have you back in Southeast yeah, Iowa. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So you talked about uh, the 4-H program. And I remember growing up, I grew up on a farm, but it, it seemed like that was mostly farm kids that were involved. But you said just now you're interested in reaching all youth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That is our goal. And right now we do reach uh, one in five youth in the state of Iowa. So we're working towards our goal. We're getting there step by step. But that is a common misconception that I hear out in the community. You know, I mentioned 4-H and they're like, oh, we we don't live in the country or we don't have pigs or sheep or cattle. And and so we don't do 4-H. But um, there's a few things that I want you to know about 4-H. And the very first thing is 4-H is not just for livestock kids. Um, we do everything from STEM to healthy living, um, communication in the arts, citizenship and leadership, and uh, anything that you can think of, anything that your child may have an interest in, we offer it. Um, so that's a really great thing is, is that um, we do welcome everybody, um, no matter your interest, no matter if you live on the farm or live in the middle of town, um, you are welcome at 4-H and we have a place for you. Um, so that's the first thing that I want you to know about 4-H is it's not just for livestock. Another thing that might catch the adults' attention is that it is all research-based. Um, everything from our curriculum to our icebreakers, there's a purpose to it and there's research to back it. And our mission is actually Actually, to empower youth to reach their full, full potential through youth adult partnerships and research-based experiences. And so we really value the research that comes um, primarily from Iowa State um, and the best practices that come from there. And we try to reach our youth with those practices. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything? Did you have other points you wanted to cover? I didn't want to cut um, you off. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Um, another big thing is um, a lot of youth programs believe that 
uh, youth, you know, they're developing youth to become leaders of tomorrow when they're Mm -hmm. in their adult stage. But in 4-H, we really strive to make leaders of today while they're in their youth. Um, We value their citizenship as they are young and um, work to also promote that throughout their adulthood as well. Um, Great. Yeah. I think if we think about the exhibits we see at you know, county fair, state Mm -hmm. fair, and the wide breadth of things. Like Mm -hmm. you said, it's way more than just livestock. So that should remind folks that it absolutely is open to any um, child and family that that's Mm -hmm. interested. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fantastic skills that are that are that are trained. Um, Do you have any specific changes that you're thinking about making to the 4-H program or kind of staying on the same course? Right? Yeah. Um, You know, with every program, there's some things that have worked for a number of years, and there's some things that maybe if we change it a little bit, it'll work even better. And um, actually, our motto in 4-H is to make the best better. Mm. And so we're always looking to um, to improve, to um, change things up a little bit, to see if it does work a little bit better. And so some things that I'm focusing on right now is to provide more opportunities to the community um, and to the youth that haven't really found their fit in 4-H yet and to really make those opportunities available. So we do have a couple opportunities coming up this month. Um, The first one is a regional STEM trip, and that is open to all 6th through 8th grade. Um, Mm -hmm. Registration is due this Friday, and the trip will take place on March 24th. Um, We're going to be traveling over to Muscatine and um, having a behind-the-scenes look at the Monsanto plant over there and also um, Merritt Farms, which is a local greenhouse company over there. So it will be a fun trip, Um, again, open to all 6th through 8th grade. And then at the end of the month, on March 30th, we're having a sustainable gardening workshop. Um, It's during the spring break here in town, so we're excited to be doing that. Um, It's on that Thursday. It will be held at the fairgrounds, and um, we'll be having a lot of fun that day, um, learning about sustainability and, and how to be a sustainable gardener in your backyard. So that will be a lot of fun as well. Great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, just you know, a reminder too, that what makes Extension and 4-H so great is that they do have that backing of a major university Mm -hmm. and all that research and all Mm -hmm. that information to help inform the programming that that, that goes on. And Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we forget about that, but it's a tremendous resource. Yep. So absolutely. anything you might be interested in, I'm guessing you can help. Absolutely. <laughs> just just come out and talk to me and we'll find a place for you. So excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me this yeah, morning. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. All right, let's uh, jump into this week's uh, calendar of events. All Rachel. right, a lot of things going on. So starting today, and actually our program today um, is out at the Extension Office. It's going to mm-hmm. be this afternoon on Palmer Amaranth. Been hearing a little bit about this. It mm-hmm. uh, will take place from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. And if you're not familiar, Palmer Amaranth is a new weed in Iowa and considered a serious threat to production agriculture and been discovered now in at least 48 Iowa counties. So you can come learn more about that this afternoon mm-hmm. at the Extension Office and refreshments will be served, 1.30 to 3.30. Tomorrow we've got Leadership Fairfield. This is going to be our final session for this year's class and we're actually studying agriculture and sustainability. And some of the events we have planned, we're going to be touring Raid and Stary, the Heartland Co-op, the Greenhouse by the Shas Voorhees cleaning that's heated by some of the excess heat there, Abundance Eco Village, as well as presentations on conventional and non-conventional um, agriculture. And, and we should probably make note that uh, coming up on April 8th, we mentioned the annual banquet. That's when the, this year's class of uh, uh, leadership yes. will be recognized. Absolutely. It's been a fantastic year, and we've had pretty good weather for I was going to call sessions. it graduation, but it's really not graduation. Well, is it? we kind of call it that, too. Oh, that we do it go. <laughs> Again, they'll, they'll be No right. caps and gowns, though. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> On Wednesday, it's International Women's Day, so that's Mm -hmm. celebrated this day, so I'd like to note that. Another program happening at the Extension Office is Food Preservation 101 from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think of this food preservation as a lost art, but it's not difficult, and there's certainly been some renewed interest in this. And... um, we do, uh, do recommend th- through this program, you'll learn about following research-based recipes to make sure that uh, you can, can create the safest, safest and tastiest recipes possible. Mm-hmm. Also, the Wellness Recovery Action Plan, this have been talking about, has been a multi-week program, and this is occurring at the Jefferson Optime Center. And again, this is Tuesday from 6.30 to 8 p.m. To learn more, call Joni at 472-5771. 
Icon Gallery has a program Wednesday night at Quest for Beauty, History of the Art of Western Civilization. And this is at 7.30 p.m. And Icon director Bill Teeple is offering a a six-week, six-lesson weekly course on art history with slides. And you can attend $50 for the entire session, though it's been going a little bit, or just $10 per class. Thursday, March 9th, we've got a blood drive at the Parkview Care Center from 9.30 to 12 noon. And another program at the Extension Office, Free Beekeeping Workshop from 6 to 8 p.m. And this will be a a series that begins on March 9th. We'll continue March 16th, 23rd, and 30th. It's a basic beekeeping class. Snacks will be served. And you're asked to register ahead of time at the Jefferson County Extension Office and don't miss out. Then as we get towards the end of the week, Friday, March 10th, we've got the Health and Resource Fair that's going to be held at the Fairfield Middle School. And John, our friend at RSVP, let us know about this. This is occurring from 5 to 7.30 p.m. And RSVP, along with other folks, will have booths there. And in particular, RSVP is going to be sharing information about their their new volunteer program to help arrange tutors at Pence Elementary. There will also uh, be talking about their other, at least 14 other volunteer opportunities that you have in the community. Plus, you can visit all the other booths as well. So again, that's happening Friday at the middle school from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Saturday, March 11th, we've got the Fairfield Farmers Indoor Market in the morning at the Senior Center, or 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Habitat for Your Humanity is having a, a build day at from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 916 North 9th. And specifically, they're looking for help to lay the floor and painting. So wear that old sweater grandma gave you in high school because it might get dirty. (laughs) (laughs) There's also a vendor blender, which is happening at Pence Elementary from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. And it's going to be filled with vendors of all types. And if you're interested in being a vendor, call Angie at 919-5302. Waterfall watching program. This is with Diane Porter and naturalist Therese Kaminsky. They're going to be watching for wildlife waterfowl in Jefferson and Van Buren counties from 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And last, Magic of Bill Blagg live at the Sondheim, 7.30 p.m. Um, on s- Saturday evening. Wow. We're probably running out of time. <laughs> getting close. That's a, a very full calendar. Don't forget to log on to fairfieldiowa.com. Click on the calendar of events, and you can keep up to date on those programs and many, many others listed there as well. Once again, time is now to reserve your spot and table for the annual banquet, April 6th. Call 472-2111. Yes. All right. Please Rachel, do. thanks for stopping by. And thanks again for having me. See you next week. All right. Stay tuned. Markets are next with the Brownfield Radio Network. <laughs> 